Hi everybody, this is going to be a tutorial on how to colour gemstones. So quite a few of you have been asking me about um, Joanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, which we're going to be looking at today. And in quite a few of the um, diagrams, the beautiful designs that Joanna does, she incorporates a lot of gemstones. And it can be quite tricky to colour them in to get them to look realistic. So what I thought I'd do is do you kind of a little basic guide as to some ways to, to achieve that. I've practised hard myself. They're not, not really easy, but if you break them down step by step, I honestly think you'll be able to do them. So you can see an opal in front of me. That's just drawn on a freehand on a plain piece of paper. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to try and show you how to replicate this in a particular design in ivy. So there's three gemstones that I had in mind and that's one of them. So we're going to be flicking between books quite a lot, so bear with me. So I think the first one that we will have a look at is, and these are ones that I've prepared earlier. So the first ones that we will have a look at is um, creating a faceted, tear-shaped um, gemstone like this. That's the first one I want to do. Then I want to show you kind of um, an oval one. And we'll do that, we won't do that freehand, we'll do that in a design in ivy as well. And then the last one I wanted to kind of show you was the larger kind of gemstones. So you can see I've got a, a blue palette here for, um, I think it's the dragon's the dragon's den, for want of a better word, with all of the um, the stash of jewels and gold in it. And I'll show you how I did this rather larger gemstone, because the, the larger ones can be a little bit more, um, not complicated to tackle, but you, you need to think about the, the facets a little bit more. So I was hoping to go through those three today. So as I say, bear with me, because we'll be flicking between pages, but we'll give it our best shot. So I'm going to go to my spare spare copy of ivy and we'll do the green one first i think so i'll get that into place and i've just got pencils in for my the markers in my book so that i could show you the pages quite quickly now i'm just going to make sure that that gemstone is roughly in the middle of shot for you like that so it's this one that we're going to be looking at here and i might just do, zoom in that little bit for you like that. So for these gemstones, the green gemstones, kind of emerald shades, I'm I'm using Prismacolors but it, it really doesn't matter what um, what pencils you use, you just kind of need to pick a palette of four or five green shades from very light to very dark and the ones that I've got picked out to use today are from dark to light are Prussian green then I've got Kelly Green. Oh, sorry, sorry, my darkest is dark green. Beg your pardon. I've got six colours here. Dark green, Prussian green, Kelly Green, uh, Sap Green Light, Pale Sage, and then my lightest colour is Grey Green Light. Now, the trick with these kind of gemstones, this shape, is to put your darkest shades around the outside and then your lightest shades in the middle so that it looks, thinking again always about light, where will the light hit the facets? And if this gemstone is front on, the light will hit the front more and these darker facets around the outside will have the deeper colours. So this is a relatively easy one to start off with and I'm just going to make sure you can still see that and that it's in a decent place for you. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I've got my deepest of the six, which is dark green, and I'm just going to, at random, these, the outside facets, literally just block colour them in. And this is why this is quite a, a good one to get you started with, because it, it other than the middle, it's block colouring. So I'm just picking facets at random in my darkest colour and block colouring in. And you can see I've got my Prismacolors quite, well, not relatively sharp, relatively sharp, because we're working in quite a, hot, um, a small area, but but not too sharp that they'd that they'd split at the end. 
So we're just going to work our way around. And fill in the facets that we think would be at the back. And as I say, I'm not doing anything clever here. I'm literally just block colouring these in. I just want to make sure my hand's not in the way too much. I might just angle that camera a little bit for you. See if that helps. we'll finish with just these two and then we can put this top this dark pencil down there we go my next deepest color is dark green uh, sorry Prussian green I'm getting all my greens mixed up today and we're just going to do exactly the same so on a couple of random facets we're just going to go around the outside in this green color like that and it doesn't have to be any particular facet at all you can as long as it's the side ones it doesn't really matter straightforward. Then I'm going to take my next darkest green which is the Kelly green and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm keeping the darker colours to the outside facets because the gemstone is facing you so that's where the light would least shine off these faces of the gem. And I think if you break it down step by step like this, it's not quite as scary. Because they can be a little bit tricky, but if you actually break it down into steps like this, you will definitely, definitely be able to do it. So I'm going to go to my sap green light and I'm just going to finish off these facets here. And hopefully already you can start to see be looking like quite a realistic gemstone. So you can see I've probably done that in what two or three minutes? Easy. Now then we are going to use our lightest three colours which is the sap green light I've got in my hand, my pale sage and my grey green light and we're going to go from um, bottom right to top left and we're going to blend and grade so that the, the darkest of the three shades is here and the lightest is here and it just gives that impression that the light will be catching the top of this front facet here and it'll be the lightest of the three colours because as I say it's facing you it's not pointing into the background so as with all blending with Prismacolors if you've seen it do, me do it before I'm just going to put a very light hand in a diagonal across the gem like that and then this area here, I'm going to press a lot firmer, but I've left my blend line there. Like that. <laughs> then I'm going to take my uh, Pale Sage. I'm going to do the same up here. So very light touch, diagonal line across there. Firm over this blend line here from the sap green light. Like that. So I'm going to brush that off. And then we're going to take our lightest colour, the grey green light, and we're just going to go firmly over what's left. And it's as easy as that. How good does that look? So, 
that's one down and hopefully you can see on there yeah that looks quite good so that's number one the next one we're going to do as I say is a replica of this and I've got it picked out in ivy as I say just bear with me while I flick through the pages so here it is so I'm going to put all of my green pencils to one side now because we're going to be using a different palette I thought if I did these in different colors it would help you with several palette choices not just one so I'm going to be looking at the the little oval in here and again I'm using Prismacolors excuse my arm I'm just going to lift them in here and then I'll read out what I've got so what I've got here is I've got um, cream and deco yellow which if you look on this makes the the highlight on the on the opal here so that's achieved with um, cream and deco yellow then my purple colors going from light to dark I've got lavender dahlia purple dark purple and black cherry and again it doesn't they don't have to be uh, Prismacolor pencils they just they can be they can be basically any pencils you want just 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 pick a palette a, a color palette so they, they don't have to be the same as I'm using you could you could choose reds just make sure that you've got within that palette a very light color of that shade and a very dark color of that shade so for this one we're going to we're going to tackle it slightly differently I'm going to start with my cream and I'm going to just lightly around about here where the highlight would hit scumble in just lightly that cream colour there and we won't be putting any purple over that because that's where the highlight of the gemstone will be like that just gently then I'm going to take my deco yellow and just around the edge of this again just gently scumble so little tiny circles scumble round that cream like that and I'm going to go back to my cream and just with a little bit of a firmer hand put that in there like that so at the centre so you're making the centre where the light would hit the most and that obviously that would be the lightest shade so we're going to start with our purples and I'm not going to put any more pressure on this deco yellow just yet I just want to start off with my lavender colour and just build a little bit of that purple colour in so I'm just going to lightly scumble in and slightly over that deco yellow because we'll be blending it in a minute just scumble in a little circle around it like that So we, we, we are using the Prismacolors just to build up the colour, which I don't often do with Prismacolors, but in this instance, it works really well. Okay. Then we're going to go back to the Deco Yellow and just press on quite firmly over that edge of that lavender so that it just melts away into one colour. And that's why we only pressed lightly in the first instance, because otherwise you wouldn't get that really nice blended melded effect you would probably see a, a differentiation differentiation in the color of the line color and then I'm going to go quickly back to my cream and just doubly go over that very very highlighted bit in the middle like that then what I'm going to do is so I can I think I can put my yellows to one side so I've got my going back to my lavender my, my pinky purple gently gently just going to mark myself out a little line where I kind of want that lavender to stop and then everything in the middle as for you will have seen my blending tutorials gets a firmer hand so I've got a light blend line where I've gone over the yellow and a light blend line light pressure blend line over this edge but don't worry you can come back to it as many times as you like then I'm going to go to my Dahlia purple I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to gently go over the edge of this and I might just take it down here slightly. Just going over that edge. So, quickly erase that. 
nothing can't be fixed and again just gently because you can really see that we're starting to build up this lovely purple colour now back to the lavender and now we're going to press on a little bit harder and I'm still scumbling because it's quite it's a, well it's a rounded shape to start with so it's a good technique to use but it's also a small area there we go and then just back to the dahlia and just building it up a little bit like that then I'm going to go for my um, dark purple and again, I'm just going to make a little line here and take it probably down here a little bit as well. Just gently, gently, gently at this point. Sharpen that up a little bit. There we go. I'm quickly going to go back to the lighter, the Dahlia purple, and then obviously with a firmer hand, like we've done with all the other colours, just scumble the blend line away like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the darkest, which is the black cherry, and we're just going to take that final area and press quite hard over the blend line and get it right up to the edge of that gemstone setting and basically that's it and you can go over as many times as you want um, to get yourself a, a, a decent blend line but then what you can also do is I've got myself here um, a Uniball Sig Signal, Signal Broad uh, white gel pen and what it can be quite nice to do is just to give the impression that this is a, a shiny gemstone is to just give it a little bit of a highlight on either side here just so it makes it look like the light's shining off it and I'm just going to zoom in so that you can see that I've put the lines on there for you okay that's number two the last one that I want to do, uh, so I'm going to put away all of my yellows and purples. And the last one that I wanted to do is to have a tackle, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit again, is to see if we can tackle one of these larger gemstones. Bear with me. Again, page flicking, but I need to find the right picture. I don't know whether I'm going backwards or forwards here. I think I'm going backwards. That's the one. This is the one. So this is the last one that I want to show you. Just making sure that's in shot for you like that. Grand. Okay. So, this one is going to be blue, as you can see, because I've, I've just started the facets off for you, and I'll explain what I'm going to do. So, from dark to light, I've got China blue, cobalt blue. I've got blue lake. I've got Caribbean Sea, I've got Blue Slate, Powder Blue and Cloud Blue is my lightest and there's obviously a lot more shades in there because the gemstone is bigger so you will need to pick yourself a slightly bigger palette. And then what I've also got out is I've got myself my chartreuse and the purple colour because if I just show you the, you the one that I did earlier, Sometimes gemstones have different kind of highlights of colour in, so you can see that I've just made it a little bit more interesting by adding in some yellow and purple here, which I'll show you just literally how to very simply put in at the end. So, again, thinking about the facets, thinking about where the light would hit these facets, it's going to be darker around the edges. If you think of the light as, as front on, it's going to and thinking about the gemstone in 3D. So these facets, these ones here, will be pointing out at you. And therefore these edges here will have the lightest coloration on because that's where the light would hit. And therefore the ones at the back are where you'd have the least light hit it. 
So again, it's just going back to the principle of thinking where the light is hitting the facets and trying to make it so that um, it's a little bit geometric. So you can see roughly I've put the same shading in, in these geometric facets here just to kind of make it a little bit the same. So as I say, I've used my China Blue already. So I'm gonna to go to my Cobalt Blue. And as before, I've left a blend line around each of these little areas. So these outside lines are just a light touch around here. And then all we're gonna do is build the color up. So I'm just gonna tilt this again slightly so that my hand doesn't get in the way. And then we're gonna start working from, um, you, you can work, you can do whatever you want, but I'm, I'm kind of just going to go from left to right so that I know I'm, I'm capturing all the facets. And again, I'm just gonna kind of gently, maybe just a millimeter at a time with each color, just gradually, gradually build that color up in each facet, going from dark to light. This is cobalt blue I've got. So medium firm, medium firm, making yourself a tiny blend line and then going over the previous blend line quite firmly. So it's gonna be quite repetitive, but bear with me because it'll be, it'll be good when we get to there. And some of these smaller facets you'll finish before the bigger ones. It won't be until you get to the kind of the really big front facets that you'll get to the lightest of the colors. So I've been practicing these quite a lot. I'm still not entirely sure that I'm I'm happy with them, but I'm happy enough with them to kind of show you guys the basics because I know you've been waiting for them. So I hope you think that they're okay. Just working my way around all the little facets and we'll just do exactly the same for all of the colours as we get lighter and lighter. And it just takes a little bit more thought with your colours that you pick out because you'll, you'll need a, you know, you, you might want to choose a few more with it being a, a bigger shaped gemstone than the other ones we've just been looking at. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to my blue lake and do exactly the same. So just medium firm, just building up those blend lines, following the, the geometric lines of the facet. So on these ones coming down here, following that line down. And you can see that because I'm pressing medium firm, I'm not even needing a blender pencil. They're blending pretty well on their own, which Prismacolors do to be fair. I can't take all the credit for that. The pencils do a lot of it themselves. And just while I'm colouring these, I'm hoping that you might have seen on our group already that I've posted our Facebook group, Joanna Basford, your pages, for those of you who'll be watching this on YouTube. Um, I was lucky enough to have been approached to do a po podcast on colouring from a very talented journalist in Sweden called Isabel Vestermark. And that's been released today on Instagram and on the Joanna Basford Your Pages site. We talk extensively about Joanna Basford, extensively about her books and Ivy and the Inky Butterfly in particular. Um, we talk about the wonderful members that we have in our group and the, the two admins that I, I, I couldn't live without. So my, my three, we call ourselves the three amigos. So it's myself, Bex Harris and Gail Kemble, who I couldn't run the group without. And um, if you have time for a cup of tea or two, and you're interested in Joanna Basford, please do tune into the podcast. Um, me and Isabella, Isabel, sorry, <laughs> me and Isabel had a lot of fun making it. Okay. So, um, I'm now going to Caribbean Sea, which is the middle of the seven blues I've got picked out. I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm going to keep working my way around. And these two little facets here we can finish off. I've also 
also, it's been a, it's been a big week, I've also been lucky enough to be the recipient of one of Joanna's own three travelling books that's going, wing their way merrily around the world. Um, I was absolutely and completely honoured when Gail wanted to nominate me to um, to have the book next after her. She's done the beautiful piece in Ivy with the strawberries at the start of the book. Um, I thought long and hard, and I think I'm going to tackle the Wonder Room just because, just because it's there. Why do people climb mountains? So it's been a big old week. It's a big, big old week for me with the with the old colouring. I've been approached by a very talented gentleman called Mitch, Mitch Manuel, who asked me to colour one of his beautiful mandalas. So it's been a good week all round. Uh, next colour is blue slate. Light to dark. And now you can start to see that where the facets are coming to the front, because we're using the lighter colours here, that you'll really start to see that they look like the light's hitting them. So as I say, they look... They look complicated and they can be a little bit tricky, but going back to the principle where you always try to think about light, where will the light hit? And just using your basic blending techniques, I think you'll have no problem with this. And we'll just finish this one off in this colour. Two little facets here will get finished off. And I also know who my travelling book is going to next. It's going to a very talented little girl in South Africa called Annabella and her grandmother, my friend Vivian Walsh. So it'll be absolutely brilliant to have a junior working on Joanna's book. Uh, second but light colour blue, powder blue. And now we're really starting to get to the end of these facets, so we want them to be light. Light, light, light. This one will probably get finished off. Let's take that along to there. And then what we'll do is we'll add some of those other funky colours in that'll just make it that little bit different. There we go. Lightest shade. Cloud blue. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? And then we're just going to quickly... Finish the rest of these facets off like that, and you don't have to be overly careful because you're just going over them with the, the lightest colour. So now, hopefully, you can see that we've got something that resembles a gemstone, which is catching the light. So, as I say, I've I've also picked out, and I've got my my pencil extender on my chartreuse because it's uh, it's getting quite small. I've got chartreuse and lilac, and all I'm going to do is in some of these lighter areas, just randomly, just gently put in a little hint of these different colours because as I say gemstones are very rarely all one colour they will have if you look at them online and research they will have kind of different tones in them so I thought it would be quite nice to kind of represent that with just a little bit of a different few highlights and this this you'll see this chartreuse works really nicely and I'm hardly pressing on the page I don't want to obliterate the blue underneath I'm just giving the lightest pieces of the facets that tiny bit of highlight of a slightly different color and it just makes it a little bit more interesting like that and that's all we need to do and then the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my um my uniball white gel pen and then quite simply, just, I'm going to clean it off actually because I was using it on purple before. Um, and then just quickly, and it 
they can be as random and as simple as that. Just a few little, following the shape of the facets again, just a few little highlights where the light would catch. And there we are. So I hope that's been useful. So we've kind of gone through three different types of gemstones. As usual, any questions, give me a ring or well, you won't be able to give me a ring, will you? No. Um, drop me a line on either the Facebook group or Instagram. Thanks, guys. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.